Hey everyone. Now you know I like to do packet captures. Well today I'm going to do some packet captures of some fragmented packets and go through how to capture them properly and what filters you should and shouldn't use. Okay for this demo I'm going to use this Raspberry Pi here to construct some packets using Scapey and send them up to this machine here that I'm going to capture them on. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, just setting up the capture. So what we've got here is Wireshark running in the background and this is Scapey running on this Raspberry Pi. Now if I start capturing, I'm going to set up a capture filter at least to start with for this host. So it's host 192.168.1.3. Okay. That's just this. The problem with that is if I do anything, because I'm SSH'd into it, all of that is going to come up on the screen. Okay? No matter what I do. And I don't want that. So the first thing I'm going to do is do that host and not TCP port 22. Okay? So that'll get rid of the, um, the noise from the SSH session. Okay? So everything else is still being captured here. So if I uh, just quit out Escapey for now, and just ping it, 102.168.1.2. Obviously, you see the pings. And of course, if I aren't ping it, they're coming in there too. So you can see all the traffic up here in Wireshark coming in nicely. Okay, now I'm going to craft a UDP packet to send to this machine in Scapey. So I'll do that now. I'm going to call it A. And define it now as IP. Destination is uh, this machine I'm going to capture on, so 102.168.1.2. Okay, I'm going to make it UDP. I'm going to make the source port uh, 1234 and the destination port 4321. And I'm going to make the payload um, hello. Okay, so what I've done there is just define the sort of thing I'm going to send. So you can look at it there, that's what I'm sending. So to send it, just do send A. What happens? Well, first, I'll just go through what we did. First of all, the ARP happened, obviously, to find it. And here's our UDP packet that I just crafted. You can see it says hello down there in the payload. And the ICMP response was simply because this um, computer that I'm capturing on isn't listening for anything on that port, so it sent an ICMP message back. But I'm not concerned about that. All we're looking at here is this UDP stuff here. Okay, so I'll, do, I'll just narrow it down a little bit more and say not ARP and not ICMP. So we can just see what I'm after with this UDP stuff, okay? So if I do that again, I can just send it again. Oop, start capturing. Send that packet. There it is. We can do that all day long, okay? So when I send the packet, you see it goes through. It's not that big, it just says hello. So because that packet was so small, the whole thing went through in one go. It didn't have to fragment a big segment of message, you know, into lots of little um, fragments of individual packets. But what I'm going to do now is make the payload a lot bigger. So to do that, I'm going to redefine this. I'm going to um, define a payload. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the first bit of War of the Worlds. Okay, so I've just defined all that as the payload. So I'll just go, I'll start again. I'll just do the definition again. A equals IP. Test equals 102.1.2.1.2. UDP uh, source port equals 1234. Destination port equals 4321. Now instead of just defining a word here, I'll call this payload. Okay, so now when I look at what I'm going to send, just look at what A is, you can see the definition there. That's the packet that I'm about to send. So I'll reset this capture. If I send that now, what do we see? Well, we see two frames got captured this time. Okay, um, well, that we're displaying. And you can see the first one doesn't say much. Well, obviously it says the start of it, that no one would have believed. But where that ends, it's halfway through the sentence. And then the next packet has the rest of it. Well, it has the whole lot. And that's the catch. You can see the first one doesn't show you any port number. It just says IP, says it's UDP, but it doesn't have any port. 
And then at the end, it's, con it's reconstructed in Wireshark to show the whole thing. Okay, and that's why you can look at the whole lot now. So where this starts, if you look at this second part here, it starts mid-sentence. It receives from the sun. If you go back to the first one, where that ends, you know, and the light and heat, it receives from the sun. You can see it continued on there. Okay, so it had to be broken up to sand because the maximum size was 1500s, right? So if you go back, back up here, uh, get organized here. 1500 okay so I couldn't fit it in 1500 bytes so I had to make another one I had to fragment it and if you look at the first packet here in the flags you'll see it's set to more fragments saying it's not finished yet there's more fragments so in the second one the more fragments uh, flag isn't set because that's the last fragment so that's all good and well now here's the trap if I set a capture filter Okay, this was coming in on port, um, what did I make it? 1234 to 4321. So I just set either one of those as a fil uh, capture filter and see what happens now. So if I send that, if I send, uh, I'll just go back to the small one where I just sent hello. So I've just defined that as a hello. Now if I send it, that's a single packet. Remember the small one. And it just goes through. We're filtering. Got a don't even need this. Got a capture filter of um, port one two three four. Okay. But if I send the bigger version with the payload, right? We only get um, one packet in there. It's not all there. Okay. You see. It's, it's a trap for you because the way Wireshark displays this is not the way it gets sent. And I'm going to try and make this even clearer with a longer one. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll make the payload twice as big. Payload equals payload plus payload. Okay, so that payload now is huge. And I'm going to send that out. So when I define that again, I'll just do it all again so you can see. Dest equals 1.2.1.2. UDP source port equals 134, destination port equals 4321. Now this payload is now the new one that I just defined, which is huge. Okay, so if I send that, I'll just refresh that uh, capture. If I send that, I only get one packet. Okay, so how big was it supposed to be? If I go to the previous filter, Okay, where I'm not defining it by port. If I send it again, the long one, you'll see it's actually taking up um, three packets. Like again, not, not worried about the ICMP message. So what's happening here? That payload took three packets to send, but we only see the, the port information in this third one here. That's where it says, ah, there's the port, source port and destination port. So these first two don't show that in Wireshark, okay? But Wireshark reconstructs it for you in the last one. So when you look at the last one, down here it starts off at the no one would have believed, which is the start, and you get to see the whole thing because it's reconstructed it from those three packets. Now, if I go back and just look at UDP port 1234 on the um, packet capture, the capture filter, send the same thing again, I only see one packet come in, but it's not the third packet that comes in. Remember, Wireshark showed the third packet with the port values, so it would have you believe that the first two didn't have it, but that's not, the, that's not what's actually going through the network. So we've got to go a bit deeper than the packet capture here. What I will do is I will save this packet, right, which according to Wireshark doesn't have any port information, but I'll just save that. I'll save it as um, packet one. Now what I'm going to do is open that packet in a hex editor, not um, Wireshark. So XSD packet one and just more that. And what do we see? See this line here? Recognize this little bit? It has the port information. The port information is actually in the first packet that gets sent, not the last one. 
Why Shark just reconstructs it that way? It waits till all the segments are in and then shows you in the last one that it was this port number and here's all the data as you saw. But really, it's in the first one and you can see obviously where it starts as well. No one would have believed that it started the payload. So, what you don't want to do, if you're looking to capture something that you know is fragmented, you do not want to do a capture filter by the port number because that port information is not in every packet as I've just shown. So what you want to do is you're going to have to filter by the IP address because that will be there as I did before. So when you filter by IP address and send your packet, you get them all through. And then you can look at it in Wireshark and there they are. But it, it might be a bit misleading that um, Wireshark shows the UDP information in that third packet, the last one of the, the whole segment. But in reality, if you look closer, it's actually in the first packet. It's just how Wireshark presents that. So that's what you've got to keep in mind if you plan on doing a capture filter by port. If there's fragmented packets involved, you won't capture them. So make sure you just filter by IP if there's uh, fragments involved so you don't miss them. I mean, as you, as you just saw, even a packet capture can be misleading and it had to go deep into the hex. Okay, so I don't know what's next. We might get a, a scope and look at Manchester coding or something. I don't think I'll go that far. But um, keep that in mind and uh, happy capturing. Thank <laughs> you.